In this video, I will show you an easy script that you can create with GPT that will allow you to just paste a prompt, press enter, and just keep repeating that as the script processes mid-journey prompt after mid-journey prompt. To get started, I've set up a file called prompts.txt where I have a list of mid-journey prompts. I've also set up an empty file called process prompts dot text which will contain a list of any prompts that have been processed already and then i go into a file called mj-automation.rb for ruby and i just start writing comments so the first comment is help me write a ruby script to automate mid journey then i start writing additional comments which will control the flow of the application being built so i said create a variable called prompts file with the value of prompts.txt. Create a variable called processed prompts file with the value of processed prompts.txt. Read all the lines from the prompts file and store them in a variable called prompts. Loop through each prompt. Create a variable called mj prompt with the value of slash imagine space prompt colon space and then the name of whatever prompt is coming in from the file. There is then a comment to just print out MJ prompt to the console and to write MJ prompt to the clipboard. It's this value in the clipboard that we're going to paste directly into Discord as we move along. Lastly, I just let it pause for two seconds. So with a preliminary script created, I just make a copy of it, go to ChatGPT. I'm just using the GPT 3.5 model, but I paste that comment in and just take a copy of the code. And you'll notice there, it reads some lines out of the prompt file variable. It creates a prompt with slash imagine prompt and whatever prompt is coming in. And it puts it to the console and writes it to the clipboard. Then all I do is run ruby space mj-automation.rb and you start seeing the prompts from the right hand side from prompts and then you start seeing from prompts.txt being written out to the console with slash imagine prompt colon as a prefix and you can just take one of them and copy them directly into discord and press enter and that prompt will start rendering so that prompt of an oil painting portrait featuring a range of colors has been created we can see it there so now we can move along with the application that we're building so the next area is to write some comments describing two functions that we need basically we want to take the lines out of prompts.txt process them into the clipboard but then move them over into process prompts.txt and delete them from the old file. So I've said add a function to the script to write a prompt to processed prompts file. I also add a little bit of extra information because even though this slows down the reading and writing, I would like the file to close after each line so that I can see lines moving from one file to another as the script processes. I then add another function to the script to remove the prompt that was just processed from the original prompts file. Once that's done, I just copy all those comments, paste them directly back into ChatGPT, and we should get a more advanced file that we can run with. Now, one of the things I noticed when this happened the first time is that it did not follow the instruction of add a function and the two lines of code that you can see at line 29 and 30 probably work okay but i really did want to see it in its own function so i could isolate bugs a bit easier if needed but for now i'm just leaving it how it is and i'm just going to write ruby space mjautomation.rb and hopefully I'm going to see lines move out of one file to another. And behind the scenes, we're also seeing the prompts being written to the console. 
and into the clipboard. Now that seems to be working, so I'll just stop the script, take a copy of everything that's in the process prompts, cut it out, and move it back into the prompts file where it was taken. Because it looks like I might have a duplicate there, I just select the whole file, and within Visual Studio I'm doing a deduplication of any lines, and then it's just save those two files, and we'll start expanding on the comments and make this code a little bit better. Here I'm just altering this function comment to be a bit clearer in the intention that I want when removing the line from the prompts before they move over into the process prompts and a little condition to only move a prompt out of the prompts file if it happens to be the same as the one we were just processing. After that, I just copy the comments, go back into GPT and paste it in. Noticing that it expanded the code, but it still wasn't putting it into functions, I really just asked GPT to say, why haven't you done this in functions? And let it run again. It did certainly break the code up into functions, maybe a little bit too much, but at least every bit of the code was now a lot easier to read. So I made a copy of it, pasted it back into the Ruby file. You can see here it created a couple of constants, one for the source file, one for the process file. You can see those files there. Uh, it wrote a function just to read from the source file. It wrote a function just to write to the process file. And it wrote a function just to remove the prompt from the source file. After that, the actual processing of the prompt was really easy. Take whatever line was coming in from the file on line 39, prefix it with imagine prompt colon, print it to the screen, write it to the clipboard, write it to the process prompt file, remove it from the input file, and then wait for two seconds. On line 47, that it just reads the prompt scene and then on line 49, loops through each prompt and processes them one at a time. So let's just run our script and see what happens. So it's printing out the first and then the second prompt to the console. And as it goes, prompts are moving out of the prompts.txt into the processed prompts.txt as we go. Uh, you notice in the console that it's actually prefixed with imagine prompt and if you look on line 53, I'm just pressing Command V to just paste whatever is in the clipboard into Visual Studio. And so you can see that the prompts are actually going into the clipboard ready for Discord. I'll just reset the file, so I'll clear out process prompts.txt and put their content into the top of prompts.txt. And I think I will make one other minor change to the application and again I'll just do it by changing the comments and reprocessing them through ChatGPT. I will just change the pause from two seconds to four seconds mainly because when you are using it in Discord you do want to be able to watch a few things before pasting the next prompt so four seconds should be about enough. The other bit of variable that might be relevant to you and it could be different for different people is how many prompts do you want to do in one go? I've set it to eight prompts and it's because I'm using a fast plan. I think I'm on a pro plan or something, which basically allows me to do three prompts at once and about four queued up, ready to go. I've just put in that little wait every eight prompts by asking the user to press enter before proceeding and pasting the code in. Now you notice there there's a wait every eight and then you can look at this if statement it's basically saying if the modulus of eight is equal to zero so essentially this if statement is going to run at prompt number eight 16 24 32 etc and at each time that happens it will print out the message press enter to continue and wait until a key is pressed so at this point I've reset the prompts.txt and the process prompts.txt and started the automation and then all I do is click into 
the text box and just every now and then press command V. So within four seconds, just paste the next prompt over and over again. You'll notice that the first three ran quite quickly, then the next four get queued. And in a moment, we should see a message in our running script saying, press enter to continue. And there it is. And you can see that there have been eight prompts processed and we can look at them individually and notice that they are reflected in the Discord bot. Go through and check that if you like. I'm just going to change the set to seven. And I want to increase the pause by one second. I'll change this to a constant variable in pause four. We just move up to the top, paste that back in, and we'll make it five. At this point, I just stop the program, clear the screen. I don't have to worry about the eight that have already been done. They're in the process file, but we can kick it off again. And it just moves on to the ninth prompt and just remember to paste it in. Now that prompt gave an error, but the error wasn't from the program. It was just, there was something in that prompt that mid journey didn't like. So then it moved on to 10, 11, 12, and we're just working through the file here. Once it gets to the seventh, it will say press enter to continue. And I'll just pause the video for a second for these images to finish rendering. The images have finished rendering. There is, of course, this one that had an invalid parameter, but the others have come through quite well. I like this Twitter one. Uh, looks pretty cool there. And we're ready to go. So now you can just press enter and keep processing. This is not a fully automated system. This, of course, is just do seven at a time sit around for a couple of minutes, do another seven, sit around for a couple of minutes. But it's a much quicker way of processing a lot of mid-journey prompts at once. Now, if you would like to see a fully automated system, which I've done in JavaScript, you can head over to my other channel, Appy Dave, and that channel, I'm talking about a more complete solution, but this solution will probably work for most people um, and Ruby is a pretty easy language for anyone to use, especially when you let GPT do the heavy lifting.